Hey everybody, this is Miss Brown. I'm here with Miss Canario, and we're going to talk to you about the engineering design process. So on Friday, we learned that the engineering design process is a series of steps that engineers use to create tools or products to help a need that we might have. Some vocabulary that we learned that you'll need to know for this lesson are technology, products that are designed to serve our needs, engineering, the process to create new technology, prototype, a test model that works. Okay, so let's just look at the, the, the graphic here on the engineering design process. What strikes me the most about it is that um, there are steps, like step one, two, three, and so on. But usually in a process where there's steps, like the scientific method, you do step one, and then you do step two, and then you do step three. And the arrows just flow in one direction. But in this case, if you look at it, the arrows go both directions. Okay, and that's, that's going to be really important, and we're going to go back to that here in a minute when we talk about it. So the first step is <clears throat> ask, identifying, and researching a need. So we don't need to build a new technology unless we need it, right? So the first thing we do is we say, okay, what is a need that we have that we need to build something for? So then we do some research, and we say, all right, so what is the need? How, how, how do we have tools now that don't fit that need? What can we do differently? All right, then we come down here to step two, and we imagine or develop possible solutions. So this is really the brainstorming phase. This is the creativity phase. This is where anything goes. There's no wrong answer. There's no, that's impossible to do. You know, we never create new cool stuff if we don't think of the impossible and then try to figure it out. So this is where you think about, you know, how could we do this? What do we want this technology to do? Okay. Then we go to the third stage, which is the planning stage, where we will um, plan and make a prototype. We, you know, we'll take these possible solutions that we developed and we'll <clears throat> you know, put those down on paper. We'll say exactly how tall it needs to be, what is it made out of, and then we'll physically make it. Okay, And that's our prototype. Remember, a prototype doesn't just look like the real thing. It actually is the real thing because it ideally is going to work because the next thing we need to do to that prototype is test it. Okay, so the next step is create, testing, and evaluating. All right, during this stage, we're going to take that prototype and we're going to test it and say, does the prototype work? Does it actually fulfill our need? Did the solutions that we came up with, do they help? Do they work? All right? Usually, the first time through, the answer is a big fat no. They usually don't work. So when that happens, we've got to go all the way back. Okay, remember those backwards arrows? All right, we've got to go all the way back to the possible solution stage. So, okay, the solution, this solution that we came up with, it didn't work. So what's a new solution for that? And we rethink it, and then we go back this way again, and we rebuild it, and then we retest it again. Okay, usually with a good product that actually goes out on the market and gets sold, they go through this process between imagine and create. I mean, they can go through it hundreds of times. It can take years before that process is complete, and they're ready to move on to the next step. <clears throat> so after the create, the testing and evaluating phase is done, um, we have a working product. Usually what we do here is that product becomes manufactured, and we start selling it, and we start making a lot of money. Okay. From there, though, it's not done, because with technology, we can always improve it. Okay. A good example of this is like cell phones. Okay. If you have a Galaxy or if you have an iPhone, we're constantly getting updates on the cell phones. I mean, the iPhone 6 is getting ready to come out. We have had like 10 models of an iPhone already, and they worked just fine. But we continue to create improvements, and then once we want to improve something, we've got to go all the way back through the entire process all over again. Okay, so that's how it works. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through this as a, an example to go through this process. So we need to come up with a need, Miss Brown. I don't know. What do you think? Well, you know, I normally try to get to school really early so I have enough time to prepare for the day. But there are just some mornings where I just continue to hit that snooze button. So my need, I guess, would be to create an alarm clock that's not going to let me hit the snooze button all over and over again. Okay. Because you're oversleeping, even though you have an alarm clock, you're oversleeping because right. you hit the sneeze button. Right. All right, that's that's a great problem. Um, I think it's probably a practical problem that a lot of people have. So we have things that wake us up already. They're called ta -da, alarm clocks, but they allow us to keep sleeping by hitting a button. So 
We need to come up with possible solutions. What could we add to an alarm clock that would, um, you know, not let us to continue to hit the snooze button or make us wake up at some point while we're hitting the snooze button? What do you think? Well, um, if I was getting slapped in the face for my alarm clock, I bet I would be jumping out of bed hitting that snooze button. So a slap happy, a slap happy alarm clock is going to slap you in the face? Oh, yeah. That would definitely <laughs> get me out of bed. Yeah, me too. All right, what about if you had, because my problem is I hit the snooze and then I go back to sleep, mm -hmm. but if I actually, like, had to stand up, then I would wake up. So what if I That's had true. a snooze button that, like, for whatever, however, the alarm clock, um, it made me stand up. Like, it made me get out of bed somehow in order to hit the snooze. Yeah. Um, let's try that, maybe. Okay, what, what other solutions can we possibly have? Um, well, my grandmother, to wake me and my brother up when we were younger, she would always, like, sprinkle us in the face with water. Oh, I hated awful. that. So, one that sprays water on you? <laughs> okay. And, um, oh, okay, another one maybe, because I guess there's some science behind, um, like, sunlight, like, natural sunlight makes you wake mm -hmm. up easier. Yeah. So, what if, because I always have, like, blackout shades in my room so that I don't get woken up by the sunlight. What if I had a light... That was, like, really bright, like, sunlight, and maybe it would wake you up. Okay. All right, so... Those are some really good solutions. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's just pick one, though, and we'll, uh, you know, go with that. Okay. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and veto the slap happy, because first off, um, I don't want to be slapped in the face. Second off, it would, I feel like it would make the whole alarm clock really bulky, because it's got, like, this, like, I don't know, I imagine, like, a Mickey Mouse hand. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to veto that one. All right. Uh, well, I'll take out the spraying the water, even though I, I hated getting sprayed with water as a kid. I, I don't see that and electronics working so well together. Yeah, we don't want to electrocute yourself, though. It would make you wake up. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, let's go with, let's go with um, this one, the alarm that makes me stand up. I feel like, because even with the sunlight one, I, I'm just going to put a pillow over my face. All right, and just turn the other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, let's go with the one that makes us stand up. So now we've got to figure out how um, how are we going to make this work. So we we obviously we need an alarm clock, right? Right. So I'll draw an old school one. That's the that's the snooze button right there. Okay. So how is this alarm clock going to make us stand up? Well, what if we had had it like move around the room or something? So that way we had to get out of bed after we hit a snooze button to uh, to get it turned off. So we could put like wheels on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if that would work in my house, though, because, like, I got, like, shoes everywhere. Mm -hmm. and I'm afraid that the wheels, if they're not, like, all-terrain wheels, are not going to, like, get over <laughs> all the junk on my floor. So what if we did it this way, where we had the alarm clock, right? And then, um, like, inside the alarm clock had, like, a weight that could roll around, kind of like, like a hamster ball. Oh, and then that yeah. would make the alarm clock, like, spin and, like, move mm -hmm. around the room. And then it kept going, even, like, like it kept moving around the room. So you couldn't just, like, hit it and then, like, lay down or if you hit that, it would move around the room. I don't know, so you had to kind of, like, chase it around the room? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, that would definitely get me up in the morning. Okay. So we would make the prototype. Um, to do that, obviously, we would just need, like, a, not, like, a flat clock, but, like, more like a, a ball-shaped. Mm -hmm. And we want to put a snooze button on it, right? Mm -hmm. And put the ringers on it. And then, like we said earlier, we do want to put this really heavy weight in it. Right. That um, now will move like right. this. So um, some, some sort of track on the inside so it'll roll back and forth. Absolutely. And then maybe even some sensors so that uh, when it, like, sees a wall, if the sensor senses the wall, that it changes its direction. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to, we need to test it. So if we tested it, we're not actually going to be able to do that right now because we're running out of time. But if we actually tested it, there's a problem that I see we could run into. If we had um, the snooze button on the top like this, mm -hmm. when it would roll, I feel like once it hits the, like, the snooze button hits the ground, it's actually going to, like, go ahead and push oh, the snooze button yeah. for us. We don't even have to get up out of bed for that. Right. So as soon as it hits the ground, it hits the snooze button on its own, Sweet. which doesn't do us any good. So how? let's go back to um, solutions. How could we fix? How could we fix that? Well, 
what if on our alarm clock, instead of having the snooze button at the very top like it was, mm -hmm. what if we put it like on the number 12 or something, something cool like that? Where so like on the face? And the yeah, front? yeah. So that it didn't roll over, it would be fine. Absolutely, right. let's do it. So we would have to remake that prototype. We would change the snooze button to be right here. We would retest it and ta-da, it works. Now we're ready to make a ton of money. All right, so that is what we like to call, um, I don't know, alarm 0 0.1, right? Because eventually we're going to want to make this better, okay, through this process, and that way we can have a, like the 2.0 version and make mm -hmm. even more money. Right. All right, so hopefully this helped you with the engineering design process. Um, one quick announcement, um, don't forget about your vocab packets. Uh, when are those due, Ms. Brown? Wednesday. Okay, they're due Wednesday. And we've already given you the vocab words in the video. Also, don't forget that we are planning on having a quiz over this information also on Wednesday. So heads up on that. If you have any questions about the process, you can come see us in our classrooms in the morning um, anytime after 730. All right, have a great rest of your weekend.